So today I'm at the GT World Challenge Endurance Event in Barcelona. And not only do we have cars going around on the circuit all weekend, we've also got an entire eSports championship happening here on site. So today I'm here with Michael Tauscher who drives for Unicorns of Love, a Mercedes AMG eSports team, also partnered with MSI Gaming. And just to start off, Michael, like how old are you now and how old were you when you started getting involved in uh, professional eSports? Um, so now I'm 18. Uh, I started professionally at like age, around age 16. Okay. So I'm doing this for like two years. Okay, awesome. Um, I started sim racing at uh, age 15. Okay. Then I started to get better and better every year. Now we're in here. Awesome. Do you have a driver's license? Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> That's a really good important thing. It's like there's a lot of drivers who have, you know, they're professional sim racers and they don't yet have a driver's license. So that is, that is, yeah, it's good to know. In your opinion, like, what are some of the biggest differences between IRL racing, because we have the GT World Challenge, we've got the GT3s, the GT4s going on track. What is the biggest difference between that that you see compared to, compared to, let's say, professional esports? Um, in real life, obviously, you can't practice as much in, as in esports. You always have uh, track days. Yeah. And uh, in esports, it's just like you wake up and you could just basically practice the entire day. Yeah. Um, and obviously here in real life you have G-forces, which we don't have. Yep. Um, it's just a static rig and uh, I think those are the biggest differences. Sure. I mean, for example on that, how much per, like when you have a big event coming up, how much per week are you practicing? Because these guys out on track maybe get, you know, building up to the three hour endurance, yeah. they maybe get 30 minutes, 45, maybe an hour and a half maximum track time. But you coming to prepare for this event at Barcelona, how many hours do you think you invested in preparing for it? It depends on every round. Um, one week, maybe 10 hours to 15 hours in one week. And then we start two weeks before the race. Yeah. So, it's so speaking of all that, you know, like all the preparation, all the events, like what are some of the most memorable events for you in your esports career so far? I mean, you're, you're really just getting started. And that's awesome to see. Um, probably this year's uh, 24 hours SRO race. Okay. Uh, we, we won this year and last year. Okay. So we won it back to back. No Congratulations. Problems. Yeah, thank you. What's the feeling like coming off of like one of those huge events? You're in the zone for hours, 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 and then you cross the finish line in P1. How's that? What's that feeling like? It's a weird feeling because you know it's over and all the work that's been putting in so now it's all over, no one cares, like, you have, to, you have to keep practicing for the next race. Sure, but I mean, that's the same thing in, you know, when I was working in Formula One, it's the same thing, you finish a race on a good result, yeah. and you're back in the office on Monday preparing for the next weekend, yeah. and it's like, it never stops, and but I hope you have taken time to uh, enjoy the achievement, because that is, is quite special. Yeah, you know, we did, uh, we took uh, off, like, two days, and then... Yeah. Start it again, but a little reset and then straight back on it. Circuit de Catalunya in Barcelona. What are some of the, your, the, your favorite racetracks from around the world from sim racing or to watch as a spectacle on, uh, on television? Like what's your favorite circuit? Top pick. Um, sim racing is probably Spa. Spa. I, I mean, it's iconic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a spectacular event. Yeah, it is. Um, but in real life, I think it's uh, Tanford. Okay. Trust of the landscape. Um, and it's a nice track too. Yeah, the new layout is really nice. Yeah, it's spectacular, fast flowing, yeah. banking that you don't typically see on uh, motor racing yeah. circuits like that unless you're in ovals. So this is a very unique circuit. Yeah, it's really good. Bringing on to the final thing, you know, in terms of we look at the GT cars in the pit lane, you have all these different levels of you've got setup, the preparation, your pit crew, your team management, and everything else, um, and then the hardware, the car itself that you're driving. But in esports, you've you've got the the sim platform you're using, and then. Probably, I think the most important thing is the hardware that you're using and making sure that you have the maximum performance, you're not losing any frames, you have consistent feedback throughout. And how do you feel that your partnership with MSI has helped you guys in terms of achieving maximum performance in, in the sim racing arena? Yeah, it helped us a lot because um, right now we have MSI products as well, which we're using um, at the high quality. We use also a headset from MSI. Yeah. Um, and as I said, the products are high, high quality. Um, we use them here and at home as well. So yeah, they have this quite a lot. At the end of the day, like high, this is everything. This is your engine, yeah. your reliability, 
in any frame stutters or anything else, it yes. doesn't cut it. So it's you need, you need the maximum hardware. It's you basically our car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or engine. That's awesome. But dude, seriously, Michael, thank you so much for the chat and uh, good you. luck in the esports race this evening. Thanks. Here we are with Renee Siebert, the team manager of Unicorns of Love. So tell me, like, what does your role entail and uh, what are, where, do you, where did you start in this world of esports and sim racing? So officially, I'm the team manager um, at Unicorns of Love. I started as a driver, okay. only a sim racing driver. And when it got more professional, I stepped back, uh, back a bit and uh, yeah, focused more on like the, the operation behind it at Unicorns of Love. Yeah. So I'm responsible for like all and everything which is not driving itself. So you mentioned that and it's something interesting that I've seen is esports has evolved massively in the last few years and you've gone from, you know, focusing on driving to now saying, you know, my, my skills are more attuned to, you know, I can look at the big picture, but how do, how do you see the evolution of esports in the last couple of years, A, and then B, how do you see, what does esports look like in two more years for you? Because it's growing mm -hmm. rapidly. It, in terms case. of sim racing or esports in general? Just the sim racing is it. Sim is racing um, grew a lot because uh, we had uh, COVID. Yeah. And even the drivers, the real drivers, they got into sim racing. They uh, prepared, they uh, um, bought a safer simulator like uh, the sim Sure. Here. Uh, because there were no races. Yeah. So it, it got a lot of attention. Um, also like uh, guys like uh, Max Verstappen or Lennon Norris, they got, sure. they got their sims as well. So it got a lot of attention, which was very good for the, for the eSports scene. Yeah. So um, the viewership um, yeah, was growing a lot. Uh, and still after COVID, yeah. um, it stays. So uh, it remains, uh, I mean, we have the, the boost here on site. Yeah. Um, it's the first time we have like a serious, um, yeah, in between like the, the, the real races. Yeah. Uh, that's new and they want to keep it, I think. Um, awesome. They want to evolve and um, for us it's, it's amazing because uh, eSports in general is a lot bigger. Yeah. Like uh, veteran in League of Legends um, and Zim Racing is um, yeah, a bit smaller because motorsport, yeah, is... Um, it's a little bit more niche, isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah. But, but I think it's also making, on one hand, motorsport a lot more accessible to other people because yeah, you sure. can go live on YouTube sure, or Twitch sure. and follow your favorite sim racing drivers or even some of your favorite professional racing drivers engaging in sim racing yeah. and, and and also like the the, the real drivers are very um, yeah, into to speaking with us because yeah. they have their own race here sure so we are coaching them also for their races because they can score points for the real championship that is so cool yeah. I, I just found that out this week and so the GT World Challenge drivers they get some of the pro drivers in and you yeah. guys are also collaborating with them to yes. help them score points in their on-track yeah, championship. And, and That's wild. They're really into it. Yeah. So they, they want to know how we train, like how we uh, prepare for the races. They know that we are using Motec as well, like yeah. the telemetry uh, software. And they know that it's quite close to, to real life, except sure. the G-Forces. So yeah. it's uh, quite uh, quite nice. Don't let me go down the telemetry. <laughs> we could talk about data all day. So you're talking about esports becoming a lot more serious. You've got huge motorsport organizations like Mercedes AMG Motorsport coming on board to work with you guys. You've got MSI Gaming, like one of the leaders in cutting edge gaming hardware. I mean, that's must be a game changer for you guys for giving you guys support and hardware. Can yeah, you talk sure. me through some of the hardware that you guys use or some of the products that you use that from MSI Gaming that help you guys to achieve this, you know, those amazing results like this Spa 24 hour win in such competitive series where there's so much talent and very fine margins between the top 10, 20 drivers in the series. Yeah, uh, so privately I, I built my own PC. Yeah. So I used uh, the MSI mainboard, the Z378 Pro, I think it is. Um, I think I have the same one. Yeah. All, of my, <laughs> all of my PCs at home have, yeah. coincidentally so, have MSI um, so, so motherboards. I, I use it privately. I can't bring the, the PC here to, to use it uh, for course. like a strategy. Um, but we uh, got the, the new MSI um, laptop, uh, which is in yeah, collaboration with AMG. That thing looks yeah, so cool. We were just looking at the videos last night. It's like, that looks like the spaceship. That that, it's amazing. I mean, if you travel a lot, it's, it's great when you want to still, yeah, do some gaming in yeah. the evening. But uh, I mean, for, for one side, I, I don't uh, game game with it. Yeah. Uh, I need to do the telemetry stuff and we have like a pit wall system. So yeah. I, uh, it does not need a lot of power, sure. but um, it's still great to have left a laptop, a laptop for the um, yeah, event. Uh, cool, yeah. I mean, it's, it's awesome to see you know, the big manufacturers and not only gaming hardware, but, you know, professional motorsport really, yeah. really embracing esports to take that. And at some point in the near future, maybe the line between professional motorsport and esports is 
not so big. I think there's, yeah. all, there's also some Mercedes AMG performance drivers. I mean, hardware is very important. Yeah, uh, for because, sure. Um, I mean, in real life, you have like an engine which yeah. can blow up. Yeah. But in eSport, it's not really possible. Yeah. So the only thing which can happen is that your PC is too bad. So yeah. we have a lot of lags and something like that. And the internet connection as well. So yeah. um, it's, it's very important to have a partner which can yeah, um, give you access to, to good hardware. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, dude, Renee, thank you so yeah. much. Best of luck in yeah, the race. And you. I'm going to be hanging out tonight watching yeah, that sure. and cheering you guys on. So uh, best of luck, man. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you for the interview.